Great. Now, bring on your backup. Oh, and... Oh. I'm an addict. A YouTube addict. Okay, not so much that I watch 24-7, but I watch quite a fair bit. I watch people, I observe their behaviours, see what they do, and then try and absorb it. You name it, I've likely watched it, or at least heard about it. I want to ask you something. What pops into your mind when you think of successful YouTubers? Because I see experts in each of their respective fields, each of them with their unique stylistic tools of the trade. Each one of them has refined, entertaining, informing and reacting down to an art. I feel like I have had a revelation in researching this video. I want to say the world behind the scenes of those that put together the clips which we watch and enjoy so dearly is fascinating and captivating beyond my wildest imaginations. In this series, we'll be analyzing my favorite YouTubers that I watch on a regular basis and break down their styles into the key components which make them so intriguing and successful. And I want to distill all that knowledge that I have obtained into the most concentrated dose possible. Specifically today, Let's Plays and Gameplay videos in general. So be prepared. A forewarning, I have spent an untold amount of hours glued to my screen with these people. They are addictive and masters at their art, so be warned. Everything they do is calculated, carefully thought out, and done to achieve maximum engagement. As Casey Neistat, famous YouTuber and vlogger, says on Peter McKinnon's channel, I think the easiest path to being able to make a living on YouTube is to do one thing really well. And Let's Players are really good at their craft. So to truly understand the art of Let's Players, we first need to ask ourselves, why do people watch gameplay? The simple answer is that they want to be entertained. Let's break that down further. They want to be entertained, as in they want to see something new, and they want to see something better. New because people don't ha have the time or money to game. Gaming is an expensive hobby. And as humans, we can only do so much. So we rely on recordings of others as an alternative. Better, as in think elite sports, to see gameplay is often a matter of spectacle. To marvel at people pushing the boundaries of human capabilities. To have reactions within the milliseconds. To be able to decipher a mind-bendingly complex problem with an arsenal of stratagems. To see stellar gameplay exceeding our own capabilities is of value to people. And better doesn't just mean good gameplay, it means to be more everything, to be more funny, to be more personal, to be uniquely intelligent. You see, this ties in to the current problem with the gaming industry of sites such as Twitch, YouTube and Vimeo. There is an oversaturation in the gameplay market. Everything that you've played, will play, and are playing, we've already seen it. We've seen it all before. There are only so many repeats of the same game, or the same section, or the same level that someone will watch before they get bored. We as humans want something unique, better, more entertaining. So how do different YouTubers deal with this problem? How do they distinguish themselves from thousands of others doing the exact same thing? Well, personality is how. Adding a unique human element revolutionizes the proverbial game entirely. You see, there is an important distinction between playing a game by yourself and playing for someone else. And that is the reaction. The difference is the viewer doesn't know what you're thinking. So to solve this, 
Let's Players exaggerate their reactions and articulate their thoughts for the benefit of their audience, but also for comedic effect. When YouTubers or streamers play for someone else, they want to be as engaging as possible. And to do this, they must react. How they react, for me personally, falls into two main categories. Responding to the game and making small talk. So what this means is responding to things inside the game and outside the game. There are several le levels of responding to the game. And the first is narrating game content. Whenever there's text, read it. Whenever there's audio, listen to it. And let your audience do the same. Hey Shady Lady from her channel TY Barker makes an analogy to radio silence, which I really like. You do want to be constantly filling the empty space. Think about like radio shows. You never want dead air. You don't want silence because if someone turns on the radio, they're looking for noise. And this applies exactly for YouTube. When a person goes on YouTube, they're looking to be entertained. Now, the second level of reacting is your response to the content. And this plays into something you'll hear streamers talk about a lot. Voicing their inner monologue. What do you think about what is happening? Now, the third level is creating stories around that content. Making something new from what already exists. YouTubers do this all the, t all the time. They create their own little stories within these games. A story within, st within a story. Kind of like the individual layers of an onion. This is done to create personal little stories to individualize their content. And I think this is the best way of engaging an audience as it makes your content more valuable as no one else but you can produce this content. However, Let's Players aren't only restricted to what is available in the game, especially streamers on Twitch and live gameplays. Small talk and audience input abruptly plays a major role. Streamers and Let's Players will constantly look for new and interesting things to react to. So whenever the text appearing in the game may become more interesting than their inner monologue, they'll switch and you'll see it in the gameplay. They'll pause and switch tracks in a matter of seconds, constantly trying to find something more interesting to react to. They'll do all of this and on top of it, react to what their audience thinks and change their content accordingly. They'll cycle through this complex and intricate process almost unconsciously. It becomes second nature to them. And this, this my friends, is why I think video game streamers and players are brilliant. Now, there's one more aspect that I think is common between successful Let's Players, and that is pers perseverance and dedication. Su successful Let's Players and streamers will shed blood, sweat, and tears to get videos out to us as viewers. They will sacrifice, and they do sacrifice, a huge chunk of their time and effort to do something amazing. And for that, I thank them. We don't just watch Let's Plays for the gameplay, but for the streamer, for the YouTuber. Now, we've gone through all this theory, but let's see how different YouTube gaming channels apply it and the nuances in their stylistic approaches. Let's start off with Markiplier. Now Markiplier is one of my favorite channels, and I highly suspect he's one of yours. Is it a surprise that he started off his channel in 2012, yet in 2017, just five years later, or 2009 days, as of recording, he is one of the most subscribed YouTubers on the face of planet Earth? And that number is 18,778,489 subscribers as of recording. In Mark's own words, When I started out, I had nothing. I literally took my tax refund. Nice. Thank you. 
and I bought computer equipment, recording equipment, uh, everything I needed to just get started. And I started with absolutely nothing. No one watched my videos. And then over time, it just grew into something big. And over that time period, he has uploaded, not counting deleted videos, 3,916 videos. That is 1,221 hours, 39 minutes, and 29 seconds. Now that probably doesn't make much, much sense. So let's just try and rationalize that for a second. Okay, as an average per day, until today, 25th of November 2017, Markiplier has uploaded 36.49 minutes per day, 1.95 videos per day, and as an average, gained 9,347.19 subscribers per day. Just think about that for a second. Markiplier's unrelenting dedication to his fans is an essential part of his success. And that is why his channel is so massive. His fans recognize that. And I truly admire and strive to match his dedication. Now, another crucial part of his success is what his channel is about. The games he plays. Markiplier tends to play horror, and horror games are very popular. Why do you suppose horror games are so popular? Personally, I believe it is because they evoke primal and intense emotion from both the audience and the streamer. Humans crave that. They are hinged on making the player react in an intense manner. And if your gameplay is forcing you into making your response to the content more engaging, then I'd say that we have a perfect storm, but good, of course. And Markiplier really recognizes this, making horror gameplays a huge part of his identity. But I wanna dissect the specifics of his style. Let's just look at a video clip of Markiplier playing through Outlast. Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier. First things first, this isn't a let's play as specific, but you can see he starts and finishes most of his videos off with a specific catchphrase. This serves as just another way to individualize his content, as branded, a specific thing only his channel will give. As discussed earlier, we see he launches straight in with narrating the game's content in an engaging manner, immersing the reader into the setting. But that's not all. Throughout this piece, he modulates his tone, adds inflection, and emphasizes specific words such as run, hide, or die, and all to make the piece that much more interesting. And instantly, Mark transitions into a response to the game, giving insight into the wary attitude in which he approaches the game. This phrase also adds unique comedic value that distinguishes him from the crowd. And that is just the menu. And as you can see, there is almost never a spot of dead air throughout the entire sequence. He fills every spot in the video with sound. I think this connects well to Mark Fishback's overall identity which he projects which is one which is of friendliness warmth and being genuine it is a subversion of the idea that the audience and the entertainer are on different levels mark addresses this very well and he bridges this gap with comedy and his humble nature everything he does contrib contributes towards this vision of a very human and genuine perspective this can be evidenced through the use of a face cam to clearly show his reactions, to show the ever-present sense of a real and emotional human being. He does not hesitate to swear, as explicit language is just another part of his brand. Again, linking back to the idea that Markiplier is genuine and his thoughts are unfiltered. 
One more clip, and I just want to show you what I meant when I said YouTubers make their own stories within the game. In this section, Markiplier tells a unique story, almost as if he is the student himself. It is never given that the figure he follows is the principal, and in this way, he is creating a unique experience. Also, it's pretty funny as well, <laughs> that the, another component of his channel is the humorous sketches that he creates. I'm not going to say too much about that, except that Markiplier, as a successful YouTuber, is always looking for ways to improve his production quality. And I think he really did that with his very cinematic series, Who Killed Markiplier. And let's not forget, Mark Fishback is a very, very talented person. He is brilliantly witty, great at acting, and insanely fit. And also, just a wonderful person to be around. Now, I could talk all day about Markiplier, as he's a spectacular person, who I love. But I want to contrast him with another channel, which is also one of my favourites, Christopher Ott. And also, oddly, a very talented person. Now, I'll only talk about the points of difference, because these channels share a lot of similarity. The most obvious nuance is, I guess, the genre which Christopher Ott plays which I would say is more focused on strategy games and first-person shooters such as XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and the Borderlands series. Now we look back to Markiplier, who plays horror games such as the likes of Amnesia, The Dark Ascent, SCP, Containment Breach, and Dead Space. And I'd say nowadays, he does a lot of smaller indie, indie games titles instead. While both do video game playthroughs, Markiplier's videos feature himself a lot more in the thumbnails and require more photo manipulation. Christopher Odd, on the other hand, has thumbnails which are generally less processed and are high quality images, images taken from the game. While both use a similar system of naming their videos, I'd say Markiplier hones in on the visceral reactions which he, uh, to what he plays causes. While you'll see Christopher Odd's titles focus on what the specific episode of the playthrough is about. And I think it all comes down to a matter of style to combat the same problem, which is immersion. More accurately, how to create immersion and engagement. Markiplier has an individual style where in his thumbnails, he literally blends himself into whatever game he's playing bringing his audience with him. And I think that this is a really good metaphor for his approach, as he plays as if every character is himself, and through his commentary, and his extremely low rumbling voice. But seriously, his low voice is, um, wow. No words. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier. It's currently 3 a.m. because I woke up early and I'm still on Cincinnati time. Okay, not so much his rumbling, crumbly, mm, delicious voice, but anyway, Markiplier brings his viewers along for the ride with him. Christopher Odd instead focuses on immersion by removing any unnecessary details, taking a minimalist design approach. This can be seen through how he barely uses face cam and is in his thumbnails chooses to highlight the game. This conscious choice is used to accentuate the game and emotion. As you can see, there is no right answer, but these are two ingenious solutions to the same problem. I want to also mention that Christopher Odd is also an extremely dedicated YouTuber to his fan base, having uploaded 2,432.5 hours to YouTube as of November 25th, 2017, and I really admire that. Just incredible. I want to leave you guys with a brief message from Say No To Rage, who is a popular Twitch streamer, and although he speaks about Twitch, I really want to, I really relate to
to his sentiment. You start screaming, there's not much you can do about the fact that the size of Twitch puts you into a position of nobody watching you. This is the way the directories are set up. There's no way for that to change. There's nothing you can do. There's no, there's no idea that you can apply that I can give you that'll change that reality, okay? And if, if you're starting out and that's your main concern, that's no big concern to have. But again, your concern is becoming a better streamer, right? So when I'm getting these questions on Twitter that say, hey, I've been applying what you said. I've been commenting and narrating my gameplay. What do you do if you still sit at zero viewers? Well, for the most part, um, for the most part, you just continue to do what you're already doing. Your goal is to become a better streamer. Your goal is not to get viewers. If your goal is to get viewers, you're going to feel like every day is a failure because in the beginning, it's almost impossible to get viewers, right? That's why this is a hard And I think my channel really relates to that. I would like to think that I'm put making the best quality content above everything else because that's what I want to do. To constantly improve my content and to be more entertaining for you guys and girls. My second priority would be sharing my content. But if I can stand up at the end of the day and say I'm proud of my content, I think I've really achieved my goal. And I think that really embodies the spirit of Twitch and YouTube in general. The question was never, how am I going to earn as much money as possible or gain as many su subscribers as possible? The question was, how can I build better content than yesterday? And this, my friends, is how Let's Players and streamers did it. Anime Nyan, out.